Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is a well-known internet celebrity. He was the champion at the San Marino Pro in the Classic Physique Division, and he's going to the Mr. Olympia in a few weeks from now. We got him on the show by popular demand. The man only needs one name, Stanimo. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave. Thanks for having me. You know you made it when you have one name that identifies you to the whole industry. It's like Madonna, Stanimal. I love it. How, where did the name come from? Uh, it's an expression in France. Like uh, when you say, like, look at this beast. Like a guy is like, you know, freaky looking or impressive. You say Stanimal. Actually, you say, wow, what? That's Stanimal. It's huge. So. It just stuck with my name, Stan. Yeah, the, yeah, the Stan. funny thing is, it's it's got Stan in there, but it has nothing yeah. to do with 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 Stan. It just it means actually, you know, the, this animal guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's so funny. You would just say, you would say, "Wow, this beast in French would do." Wow, Stan is. <laughs> I like that's it. just how you would say it. <laughs> so it's really Stan animal. It's not really right. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I say Stan animal because it's just more yeah. international. But right. in French, you would say Stan animal, yeah. Now, you, you do have a French last name. You, your, your real name is Stan Delongu, right? Is that pronounced? Yeah, that's right. Stan okay. Delongu, yeah. <laughs> Delongu. Delongu. My French is not so good. I took Spanish in school. Uh, that's but, all right. You know, Stan, you have an interesting story because you're one of these guys, and I've interviewed a few people like this, that have lived pretty much in a lot of different places. You grew up in Paris. You moved to, yeah. would you, you moved to Nigeria. You were in Switzerland for a while. Now you're in the U.S. What is it like growing up in so many different places like that? Uh, well, Nigeria, I don't have much, much uh, memories of it, but uh, I don't know. I've always been very attached to that part of my, you know, story. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting because you see different, like, different cultures. Uh, you can see different, like, things from a different perspective. Like when I grew up in France, I was very proud of being French. Uh, when I left France, it was just after the first World Cup we won in '98. So yeah, I came to Switzerland, I'm very proud of being French, and then I see. I saw the, the perspective of the Swiss people who saw all oh, these French people, they're so cocky, so like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They just won the World Cup, we see it every day because they watch French television. And it, it, was, it was a little bit too much for them. At first I didn't understand, then I started getting their, you know, their point of view. So it just opens up your, your, your perspective a lot. Yeah. Are French people <laughs> obnoxious? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> I don't have any pro I never had any problems with any French people. But why do the French hate Americans so much? You always hear that. Is that true? No, 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 no I don't think so. No, yeah. I don't think so. Not that I know of. I, not me, for sure not. <laughs> A lot of Americans say when they go visit France, they, get, they, get, uh, they don't get treated well. I don't oh, know. The only, thing, the only thing, yeah, people sometimes in France, they get um, a little, um, uh, how do you say that, annoyed is that, American people just assume everybody speaks English, and <laughs> don't, <laughs> they, don't just, they? I thought everyone does speak English, no? Yeah, usually, but that's why that's why they think like you know Americans just don't make the effort of trying, you know. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, I think that's the only thing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course, no one, and not everyone speaks English, but we we do think. I think Americans do think. That. I think that's 100 percent accurate, and they think <laughs> that if you speak louder, that, that that the people who don't understand you will understand you better. You know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk. Let's talk about how you got into this sport to begin with, because being a guy who was moving all over the place when you were younger, where did you actually get introduced to bodybuilding? Wh who was like your first person you looked up to and said, "Wow, that's who I want to look like"? Um, it's an interesting question. I always, you know, I always played a lot of sports. Uh, when I grew up, I was playing uh, judo. I was doing, uh, yeah, judo, tennis, soccer. Uh, fencing. I was actually French champion of uh, fencing when wow. I was like eight years old. <laughs> that's a, that's a good uh, title to have in France too, because they they, they really uh, dueling and everything like that and sword fighting is important, right, yeah. in the French culture. My, 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 my actually my master was the world champion in '94 with the French team. Wow. So I I was I went to really good school. Uh, then I started playing basketball. I loved that. And since I love basketball, I was looking up to the NBA and the guys were built, you know, more than uh, European players. So that's when I started like training more, you know, the like doing push-ups, abs, all that kind of things, right. and slowly got into the gym. And then when I didn't have really time to train as much for sports, I just, you know, it was part of my identity to be active and being, you know, like fit. So I couldn't just stop 
sports altogether. So that's when I started picking up on uh, lifting weight. I actually started in my bedroom for about a year, uh, making sure I was, uh, you know, committed enough uh, to get a gym membership and not just being one of these people who get gym membership and pay every month for nothing. Right. So once I saw I was uh, really hooked, I, just, I, started, I joined my first gym. And uh, that was in January 2006. And I've been training since then. I never had the, the pretension of competing at all at first until like, I know, like around 2013, that's when I started having the idea of competing. And uh, of course, I was looking up a lot to, um, well, I, I think what started me when I was really young is watching Dragon Ball Z. I don't know if you know what that is. It's like Japanese uh, sure. uh, cam comics. Yeah. I think that's what got me into that a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, um, superhero did, and all that. When did you know you were good? When did you know, hey, man, I'm really good at this. And I'm gonna, this is something I can do for a living, you know? I, ne I never thought like I don't. I, don't, I, I think I just. Uh, it's when I started putting stuff out there, you know, on social media. Uh, it was on Bodyman.com actually that I started putting some pictures, and you know, because you had like I don't know if they still do that. Um, they had a body space or something, and you could put uh, progress pictures and stuff like sure. that. Sure, I remember that. And, on Bodyman.com. Yeah, the same, yeah, and at the same time they were starting Instagram, so I was starting putting pictures on both uh, platforms. And I started getting some feedbacks from, and at the same time, actually, they, they came up with the men's physique division. So a lot of people were saying, oh, you should try a you know, men's physique show. And you, 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 you're like, you're lean, you got a nice build, you should try. Did my first show, got third place, and then I moved on. Uh, I came, I was actually did my first show in Muscle in Paris. Um, and then I, that was when I finished college at the same time. So I decided to come to the United States for, you know, five-week vacation, enjoy, you know, the, the, the bachelor degree and all that stuff. And uh, while I was here, I, I did a couple more shows. Um, got second in WrestleMania World Championship, uh, men's physique. And then I went to, um, I did an NPC show in between. And that's when I saw the big difference in between WrestleMania and NPC. <laughs> I, instead of having just the athletes who are not, comp while they're not competing, they're watching the show, you actually have people coming to watch the show, you know, and right. NPC and a lot of people. So I understood right away that that's where the, it was really happening, you know, everything for the show. I wanted to make a career out of it. I had to move into the right. NPC, join the NPC, and uh, be pro league. And so I got lucky because <laughs> while I was here, the first day I came uh, in 2013, ju just to make, uh, to understand the timeline, in 2010 was the first time I came to the United States um, and came to experience the life here in, you know, a gold in Venice. I was here for about 10 days and did like the West Coast World Trip, the usual thing. And I was, I really wanted to meet Jack Cutler. And uh, so I, the last day I was here, I got lucky enough to, to see him. That was just before his, uh, his last title. Uh -huh. And uh, I was uh, like four, five, six weeks out from the Olympia 2010. And when I came back in 2013, I was the first day I went to the gym, I was training legs. And the guy who came just after me asking if he could use the leg press with me was Jack Cutler. Oh my God, so, that's funny. <laughs> so then I started talking to him. And uh, Dave, you know, Dave Boulay, you probably know him. Yeah. Dave Mad Max. So he was there with, Dave, with Jay, and Jay was trying to really understand what I was saying. So he, he went, uh, yeah, I was talking, speaking French to Dave, and Dave would translate to ah, Jay. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Yeah, Dave speaks French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because my accent was even worse than now. <laughs> it was yeah. hard to understand for him. And, um, and so then after, after you know, we, we, we spoke for like maybe two hours. At the end, Jay like, took a picture and put it on Twitter and wished me good luck for my next show. Uh, the next day, Dave was interviewing um, Dexter Jackson, so he took me and brought me uh, with him to that uh, Max Muscle store where we did, he did the interview with, with Dexter, I met Dexter. And then I got <coughs> offered by the, um, the owner of the, the store a job to work there, you know, under the table um, while I was staying there. <laughs> I just said, yeah, of course, jumped on the yeah. opportunity so I wouldn't, you know, use my savings, all my savings at once. and. Maybe we were able to stay longer. Yeah. And when I was staying there, then Jay said, "Oh, there's the Fit Expo in January. Would Stan want to come and help me?" And I was like, "Dave, when I, Dave asked me, that was of course I could, you know, get the opportunity to spend some time with one of my idols. Right. I'd love to. So then I postponed my flight the first time. And when I was staying there, I met the guy who wanted to send me to the Arnold Classic to try to get my pro card in uh, 2014. And I got my pro card in men's physique with the help of a uh, buddy by Kirk, Kirk Chilik, who was coaching me. And Mark Anthony, who was the Mr. Olympia at the time, he helped me with my posing because posing was the main thing I, uh, I needed help with. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, so that's how 
I started and then with the getting my pro card, I've been able to apply for the visa and getting my visa, I've been able to stay. So I never left in the end. <laughs> oh, wow. So that, that's, that's a real, uh, you know, real cool story. You know, you, you, the one person you wanted to see, you meet him on the last day you're here pretty much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> You know, yeah, I always say there's no such thing as coincidence, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it was really just the right time. Really, like, when I came back here in 2013, it was, everything just clicked. And, right. uh, yeah, just everything happened one after the other. And uh, just, yeah, and now I'm here. I <laughs> qualify for the Olympia. I know. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a minute. What, why do you think you're so popular on social media? You have, like, 180,000 followers on Instagram. Hey, what, what is it about you that, that people find, you know, interesting? Well, I think I think my story inspires a lot of people because a lot of people are like me. Like um, I'm training with Sean Rodden, for example, right now, and I met him in 2013 at the FIBO. I talked with him for like a, as long as I could before being really boring, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and then I came when I came here, I saw him at goals, and he was like, "Oh, you here?" <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm still trying to follow that dream, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, after that, after a few months later, he was like, "You're still here?" Yeah, I just got my pro card. <laughs> And then move to class. I mean, you know, it's just uh, everything's been happening for me like this. The same thing with Callum. When I came here in 2013, uh, that's when I met Callum von Morgan. He was he had like 5,000 follower, uh, followers at the time. He was just really starting. Right. And um, and we became friends. And I've been lucky. I think one of the main reasons is being here at Gold Gym Venice. I'm, I have the chance and the opportunity to meet a lot of like influencers and people who are in the industry. Right. And. I, I've, I've been lucky to like build a relationship with these people, and you know, you, so people start seeing you, you know, <clears throat> on their social media, and then they're like, oh, "Who's that guy? I see him on, on this guy's page, on this guy's page, yeah. on this guy's page." And yeah. then they want to know more, and then they learn the story, and they're like, "Oh, I, that's, that's inspiring," and maybe I can do that, and then they just, you know, they start following you too. So. So, you know, it's interesting because, you know, a lot of people f feel that v Gold Gym Venice is not, a, is not uh, you, know, you know, significant anymore. You don't need to go there because of social media. In the back back in, the, in my day, people would make pilgrimages out there. But maybe not. Maybe it is important because there is a lot of people there. And like you said, there's a lot of networking that's going on still in, in that gym. And you obviously yeah. took advantage of that. Um, obviously, your physique speaks for itself because you had a great year last year. You had a, did a number of shows. You placed third at the Ferrigno Legacy Classic. You won the San Marino Pro in the Classic Physique Division, which qualified you for the Olympia, which you'll be competing in in a few weeks now. I mean, you're living the dream. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's my it's a yeah it's an absolute dream come true. Uh, it's, uh, when I stop and think about it, I just <laughs> I'm, I just can't believe it. You know, I have to pinch myself a few times a day. <laughs> <laughs> now, but, you. You always had legs. You got good legs. Like, wh why did you even do men's physique to start off with? Why? Because there was no classic. Is that was wh why you were doing it? Yeah, exactly. There was no classic physique, gotcha. and um, so I was too small to do anything else. You know, really. And I, but I always consider myself a bodybuilder. You know, like I always trained the whole body. I always uh, was thinking of the whole overall symmetry. I didn't want to just look good in shorts. I wanted right. to have a, a balance. You know. So and I always looked up to the old school physiques like Bob Paris and Lila Brada, Samir Benut. All these guys always inspired me. And this, actually, Samir Benut also played a big role in in my transition to classic physique. So because he taught me how to pose and oh, wow. yeah, that's that's impressive. Yeah, yeah I've been and uh, yeah, him and Rory Littlemeyer. I mean, I've been. That's the thing. You hear is it, the goal in Venice is still the mecca to me. And I was everybody. Everybody wants to. Everybody comes here at least once. You know and. You make connection, you do collaborations, there's so many things to do. I was going to ask you, you know what, because you mentioned Rory Liedemeyer, you kind of posed very similar to his because you got a similar physique, but I was wondering, yes, <laughs> is that why you grew the beard, to, to look like Rory? <laughs> Probably, in the back of my mind, like subconsciously, <laughs> <laughs> I could be. <laughs> you, guys, yeah, you guys look like twins now, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah he, he still looks, looks great. Young. Yeah, he looks amazing, he looks amazing. <laughs> I gotta get him on. Yeah. I gotta get him on the show one of these days, and get, he's got a great yeah. story. So. Oh, he got some amazing story, like <laughs> lots of them, and he, yeah, he, you can just sit and talk for him for like the whole day, and he, yeah. he wouldn't be done with all these. No, stories. yeah, it would just, probably be a six-part interview. Um, oh yeah, and he's a great storyteller too. He's just yeah. He's, he, he's got like a photographic memory. He doesn't he remembers every detail? Oh. Uh, every detail. Yeah. <laughs> now, Stan, uh, you just started working with Chris Aceto for the Olympia. How did that come about? Well. 
<clears throat> I've got uh, the huge opportunity and chance to uh, be able to follow Sean Roden uh, the last two years at the Olympia. And so that's when I met Chris because he, he, you know, he checks on his athletes every every two hours between, you know, each meal. So he can tell them what they're going to eat the next yeah. next meal. And um, so I got the chance to meet him and uh, seeing how he was he worked with, with Sean. And, um, you know, I was coming from men's physique. I, I don't think he ever coached any men's physique guy. So I never really think about having a, a coach of his caliber before. Um, and then... I was doing my show, the, I think before the Ferrino last year, I was doing the um, Pacific USA where I got second place. And uh, that's when I wanted to maybe work with him. So through Sean, I, I, I sent him some pictures and he said, you look great. You know, I don't, we're too close to the show to, for me to step in and, and try to change anything really. So it's, there's not enough time and you're doing really good job by yourself. So we didn't work for that time. But after the after I qualified for the San Marino at uh, the San Marino Pro, I decided that because like when I did the San Marino, the Ferrigno and the San Marino, first of all for the Ferrigno they measured me shorter because I came in better condition, so I lost that you know a little cushion, uh, fat oh, cushion really? under my heel or something. Wow. <laughs> so then I had to drop another six pounds and I oh. had a few hours to do that. <laughs> oh my god! Um, what? Yeah, hey, let I, me ask you a question. Don't you think you that they should have like a one height? And they should give you a card that has your height on it so you don't have to keep getting measured at every show? Absolutely. We were just talking about that with Jim Manion, uh, Tyler, and it just, it makes sense. Like, once you turn pro, you should have your, your height registered and that's it. Right. You know, I mean, why should you be stressing out not knowing if you're going to make weight because they're going to they're yeah. gonna measure you wrong? It's stupid. Yeah. It's, too, it's, it's really hard and really stressful, for sure. No that's, one's that's growing something. at this stage. Unless you're under 18 years old, <laughs> you should have a, a standard card of what your height is. That's it, you know? Yeah, and if you really, you, you're growing, you can maybe, like, uh, you know, uh, ask for a remeasurement or something. Right, once right. In a while, you know? right. But, yeah, I totally agree. You should have that. You know, I, and it would be easier also for the athlete checking. You know, you just come in, they, they see next to your name the weight you have to make. You are right. you're either under or you're not, and that's yeah, it. much, be much easier. Much easier, much easier. Now you're yeah. also going to be promoting a pro show in uh, in France. That's got to be exciting, huh? Uh, pro qualifier, Chris. Pro, pro qualifier, qualifier, excuse me, which is even better. Yeah. you'll make more money doing uh, a pro qualifier. Uh, I want I want to do pro pro show later on, but I want to make sure I run the show. It's gonna be my first show, so I want sure be sure it's you know run smoothly. And everything, you know, is, is good for the athletes. So then I can bring pros and they can have a really enjoyable experience, right. you know. Sure. And being an athlete myself, I know how, how it is. And I don't want them, I don't want them to be, you know, uh, not in good conditions to compete. So What, what know, part of uh, France are you going to hold it in? Uh, we're just figuring out right now, probably the pro qualifier would be in Lyon. Because it's close to the, you can either access through the Geneva airport or French airport. And then you have train really quickly. Oh, um, good. Yeah, to, to be able to, to That's smart. be there. That's very mm -hmm. smart. Well, Stan, it sounds like you're doing great. Obviously, you got a couple. You got what about five, six weeks now till the Mr. Olympia competition. We'll be doing the classic division there, uh, going up against Breon Ansley and, and Chris Bumstead and all the top guys in the division. Uh, I yeah. imagine you got to be super psyched to be standing on that stage. Oh, I'm, I'm really pumped for sure. Uh, especially like uh, once before that, I used to do like eight shows a year or so. So. I never had that time to really grow. So this year, I've been, I had the chance, you know, I qualified early in November, so I had the whole year to really make some, you know, pretty, I think, big changes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I stayed really, I, I haven't posted any of the picture, so nobody really knows how I look uh, and how much progress smart, I made. Smart, smart man. Very smart. <laughs> playing, playing it old school. <laughs> I got to call Chris Aceto and get some text messages of, of your picture sent to me so I can see what you look like. <laughs> yeah, if you want, sure. <laughs> But yeah, I'm keeping it rabbit, like all wrapped up, and I see everybody posting their pictures, so it's good for me. I know, like, I can really bring that element of surprise, and I also had the chance to train with uh, Chris Bumstead, who was here last week, right? Uh, and I also trained with Brian last Sunday. He's going to Kuwait actually tomorrow, um, and uh, yeah. So, uh, and Regan is a good friend of mine. We trained together last year with Sean when he was getting ready for Tampa. So it's going to be fun to be on stage with all these guys. Of course, Danny Hester is a long friend, like longtime friend of mine also. So being able to be on stage with like a bunch of friends, it's really like bringing the old school. I feel like really bringing, you know, that pumping iron spirit. Back, yeah, you know, yeah, there you go. Training together, going on stage together. Good camaraderie, yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly until, until you guys are standing on stage, then you all want to beat each other's ass, you know, so. 
<laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I don't think that's really my type, but I mean, I want to win for sure. Yeah, of course uh, you want to so. win. Don't, if you said anything other than that, I wouldn't believe you. Stan, uh, no, best <laughs> of luck. You're living the American dream here, and uh, everything's going great for you, and I'm so happy to hear that. And uh, if you want to, Thank you. So what's the name of your, your, your Instagram is Stanimal9, correct? That's right. Yeah, Stanimal9 is my uh, uh, international page, my main page, and then I have a French page, Stanimal.fr. Okay. Uh, where it's everything in French. It's different content, but just um, right. I want to address you know both public I have so they can really understand me and 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 if they want to follow both pages, then I could I they at least have something different on each right. page. <laughs> What's your YouTube channel? It's Stan Emol in two words, and I'm vlogging every day to the to the Olympia. So okay. I've been I've been doing 70 days so far. So awesome. people have been uh, yeah I've I've got a lot of people following that journey with me. Uh, it's a great support too. So and it's been exciting because they, they see like the changes. They just see on my face because they don't see my physique. But sure. <laughs> it changed a lot already. And I think that's the that's the the be I mean honestly, I think it's the best part about bodybuilding is that journey to the show sure. and being able to share with with people. Because uh, for example, I'm not a huge UFC fan or anything, but like if I watch the UFC fight and I see the guy, the athletes getting ready for the show, like for the fight. I like. I want to root for that. Like, that's the guy I'm rooting for. That, right. Like I get attached to him, and that's what I like the most is seeing that journey to the fight. That what leads to the fight. True. The fight itself, I don't really care myself. And I think that's what people really care also because they see the athlete on stage being, you know, looking amazing and all that, but they don't see all the hard work that comes. You of know, course, that they want to see the know, process. That's... Yeah, they want to see exactly. the process. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm showing. I'm sharing that raw process, <laughs> very really, like low editing, but so I'd be able to post videos every day. Mm. But yeah, it's pretty fun. Best of luck up on that Olympia stage. We'll see you in Vegas in September, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, you'll emerge as the new champ. Thanks very much. Yeah, I, will. I visualize that every night, so hopefully it works. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. And that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live with, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.